Hi everyone, in this introductory video we're going to be covering several basic image processing concepts related to working with images. All this material is very essential and uh, we'll be using Python and specifically OpenCV to demonstrate, for example, how to read an image and display it, understanding how images are represented by data, uh, the differences between grayscale images and color images, and specifically what it means to have multiple channels in color images, and then finally uh, how to save images. So just a couple of things I wanted to mention before we get started is that we'll be using Jupyter Notebooks for most of these demonstrations, mainly because it's a very convenient way to display intermediate results and has some very nice documentation features that make it easy to present code and supporting material. So in some cases we might actually use Python scripts for specific applications, but mainly we'll be using Jupyter Notebooks uh, in this series. Uh, so to get started, I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, this first section here where we're importing some required libraries. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention is that when you use Jupyter Notebooks, um, you want to use this uh, matplotlib uh, inline specification here so that we can display images directly in the notebook. And then one other thing uh, that we'll be using in this notebook is this uh, IPython function image, which will allow us to display and render images directly in the notebook. So in this first example here below, uh, we're going to actually use that function to display two checkerboard images here. They're both black and white checkerboard images. And the first one here uh, is 18 by 18 pixels. And this next one here is 84 pixels by 84 pixels. And you can see that if we read in those files and display them directly in the notebook, that their actual size is uh, uh, faithfully rendered. So the uh, 18 by 18 pixel image is quite small here and uh, you can see the difference between the two images. And one of the reasons we wanted to start with that is because uh, generally we'll be using OpenCV to actually read in uh, an image and store that data in memory as a, a NumPy array and then uh, working with that NumPy array in terms of uh, manipulating the image or uh, saving the image or displaying the image. And in those cases we're really displaying a mathematical representation of the image and not necessarily a faithful representation of the image within the browser itself. So that'll become more clear as we um, uh, proceed further through this notebook, but we just wanted to draw that distinction. So let's scroll down here and take a look at the first function that we're gonna be using from OpenCV. Before we get started though, I just wanted to mention that um, when we introduce new functions, we uh, decided to include this uh, documentation uh, section here in the notebooks that summarize the functional syntax I describe some information about the arguments required, maybe some op optional arguments, and then the um, we've also provided the OpenCV documentation links. So uh, we're not going to go through these uh, sections in great detail, but we will refer to them when we describe some of the code uh, in these notebooks. So let's just take a look at how we use imread, and in this first example here we're reading in the smaller checkerboard image. Notice that the first argument is just the uh, file name for the, um, for the image itself, which can be either a relative or an absolute path name. And notice also there's actually an optional second argument here, uh, and here we're indicating zero. And if you look back up here in the documentation section, you'll see that zero corresponds to a flag that specifies that we want to read this image in as a grayscale image. And uh, we'll talk more about this further below, but I just wanted to point out that um, there is an optional second flag here that we'll make use of uh, quite a bit. And uh, then the uh, return from imread is a uh, NumPy 2D array representing the image. And I can print that information here using the print command. And you'll see uh, down here, there is the uh, data that represents that image. So it's uh, 18 rows and 18 columns. And each of the values represents the pixel intensities uh, for each of those uh, pixels. And notice that they're in the range of 0 to 255 because this image is being represented by an unsigned 8-bit uh, integer. So let's scroll down here a bit further and print some information associated uh, with the image. So uh, drawing your attention up here uh, to this code block, we're using the uh, shape and uh, dtype methods uh, of that um, NumPy array object to print out both the uh, image size and the data type. So um, here you can see it's 18 by 18 and unsigned in as we had pointed out. And so at this point, uh, let's talk about how to display the image. So here in this code block, we're using the uh, matplotlib function imshow uh, to display a representation of that image. And so here we're just passing it uh, the NumPy array that represents that image. And you'll see this uh, plot below. So notice that this is actually a plot or a mathematical representation of that image, but it's not 18 pixels 
a wide on my screen. It's, it's just a plot representing 18 pixels. And so you can see the axes here correspond to um, 18 by 18. I also notice that it's not black and white as we expected, but uh, looks like yellow and dark navy blue. And uh, the reason for that is that matplotlib uses color maps to represent uh, image data. And uh, in this particular case, it's using some other color map rather than a grayscale color map. So if we want to display this as an actual grayscale image, we need to actually set the color map. So we're going to do that here in this uh, in this section where we uh, call I am show with an optional argument uh, color map equals gray. And if we set the color map equal to gray, then then we get what we expected, a black and white uh, image uh, representation. So let's take a look at another example. Here we're reading in a another uh, checkerboard image of the same size, uh, but this has pixel intensities that range from 0 to 255 with lots of gray values in between. So you can see that uh, reflected here in the matrix itself. And then when we plot the image, you can see the uh, grayscale representation of those middle tone values. So it's not a very interesting image, but it demonstrates uh, just the idea that a grayscale image can have values between 0 and 255 and that those are represented uh, on a continuum from pure black to pure white. So now we're ready to talk about uh, color images. So let's scroll down to this next section here where we're gonna read in a uh, high resolution image of the Coca-Cola logo. Uh, so here we're using the uh, IPython image function to do that and we're rendering that image in the browser. And um, let's uh, scroll down to this next section now and, and actually use OpenCV IMRead to read that in and store that data in a, in a matrix. So here we're storing that information in this Coke underscore image object. Notice that when we read it in, we specified an optional second argument of one here. So it's going to read in this uh, image as a um, color image. And uh, it turns out this image is in an RGB format. So there's three channels, one for red, green, and blue. And when we print out the size and the data type of this um, matrix, you can see it's 700 by 700 by three, where three is the number of channels. Uh, but notice that when we display the image down here using uh, matplotlib im show, uh, it comes up blue, which is unexpected. And the reason for that is because OpenCV actually uses a, um, a different uh, format for storing the channel information than most other applications. So for RGB images, OpenCV uses a uh, channel order of BGR rather than RGB. So matplotlib is expecting this to be RGB, uh, but the way that OpenCV read this into the matrix, it stores it in BGR, so it ends up looking blue unless we swap the order of the channel. So that's what this uh, next bit of code down here does. In this block here, we're taking this Coke image array and swapping the order of the channels here. That's what this syntax does here. It reverses the order of that last member of the array. And uh, now we're going to display that and it comes up red and white as we expected. So that's just something to be aware of. Whenever you're working with OpenCV, you need to be aware of the um, channel order convention. And we'll see that uh, come up again and again in these notebooks. Uh, so now we're going to take a look at um, splitting and merging color channels in this next section here. Splitting and merging um, are pretty straightforward in uh, OpenCV. And you can refer to this documentation link for more details. But uh, here's the example. So let's just go over that. Uh, here on this first line, we're using imread to read in a color image. And notice here for the optional argument, we're actually specifying the flag as opposed to one uh, for specifying that we want to read this in as a color image. And we're going to uh, store that result in image underscore nz underscore bgr. And I specifically used bgr in the name of the variable to remind myself that that's what this represents since we're reading it in using OpenCV. And now on this next line, I'm going to call the OpenCV split function to take that multi-channel image and split it into its components, B, G, and R. And so each of these uh, variables represent a 2D NumPy array that contain the pixel intensities for those uh, color channels. So in this next section of code here, we're simply gonna use um, uh, I am show to display each of those representations as a grayscale map. And then this last bit of code here takes those individual channels and uses the merge function to merge them back into uh, what should be the original image. And we'll call that image merged here and we'll show that as well. 
So now taking a look at the images below, we've got the red, green, and blue grayscale representation of each of the channels, and then the merged output over here to the right. And it's uh, worth a little bit of a mention here, but you can get some intuition by just taking a look at the original image. So for example, this lake is uh, kind of a turquoise blue, if you will. It's got some green and blue in it for sure, and, and probably very little red. So if you now go back to these channels, you can see that the red channel for the portion of the lake is, is low, meaning there's not much red component in that color. So that's why it's darker, it's closer to zero. And notice that the green and the blue channels are fairly high intensity for their respective uh, colors. So that's indicating that the color of that water there has a very little red in it, but quite a bit of green and, and definitely quite a bit of blue. So that's kind of the interpretation. So next, let's uh, scroll down here and talk about another function in OpenCV uh, called uh, CVT Color. This allows you to uh, essentially convert between color spaces. So uh, the syntax here is you supply a source image and a code indicating the uh, type of conversion you want, and the, uh, the result will be um, a different color space. So this is easiest to talk about just uh, with an example. So we have a very simple example here converting from BGR to RGB. So we're calling CVT color and we're passing it the BGR representation of that image that we uh, read in above. And we're specifying a code of BGR to RGB. So this is simply a flag indicating to OpenCV that we're supplying it a BGR image and we want to convert it to RGB. And uh, so I'm storing that here in this uh, new variable, and then I'm going to use uh, IM show to display that. And this is what we expect. We're just simply displaying the original image. But if you look at the documentation for CBT color, you'll see that there's all kinds of uh, color codes that allow you to convert between color spaces. And so that's the uh, subject of this next section of the notebook here, where we are um, going to convert that image to a different color space. So in this first line up here, we're going to convert the BGR representation of that image to an HSV representation. So HSV stands for hue, saturation, and value, and that's another color space uh, that's often used in image processing and computer vision. And so we're gonna store that result in a, in a variable named image underscore HSV. So now I can split those channels just like we did above and get the HS and V components. And uh, just like the example above, I'm going to plot all four images here, the three uh, channels and then the original image. For example, uh, hue represents the color of the image. Saturation represents the intensity of the color and V represents the value. So you can think of saturation as being uh, a pure red versus a dull red. And you can think of value as being how light or dark the color is, irrespective of the color itself. And then hue is more like the um, representation of the actual color. So just as an example, in this next section here, we're going to actually modify one of the channels. So if you look at uh, this first line of code, I'm going to take the, um, the current hue value and add 10 to it. So we're just shifting the, where we are on the color spectrum. And then I'm going to merge that new channel with the original S and V channels and uh, get a merged image. And then I'm gonna use a CVT color to convert that from HSV to RGB. So now I've modified one of the channels, I've merged it and now I've converted it. And then I'm going to uh, use IM show below to display each of the color channels and then the modified merged image. Um, so you can see here that the modified image because we've changed the hue uh, looks different from the original image up here. So that's a brief introduction to color channels and color spaces. And now we're ready to move on uh, with the final section of this notebook, uh, having to do with saving images and writing them to disk. So there's a, a function in uh, OpenCV similar to imread, it's called imwrite. And it's very simple to use. You simply pass in the uh, file name that you want to save the file as, and then the, uh, the image itself. And uh, so there's an example here. Um, we're going to use the I am right function and we're going to give it a file name New Zealand Lake underscore saved to indicate that we're actually saving this from our notebook. And we're passing it this image that we've been working with here in BGR format. And then on the very next line here, we're going to use that uh, IPython image function to read that file back in and render it right here in the browser. And then the last thing we wanted to conclude with is just uh, taking this image 
and using IM Read to read it in, uh, both as a color image here and as a grayscaled image here, and then print out both of those arrays. And uh, notice that uh, the first one read in as a color image has got three channels, and the one that's read in as grayscale has got just a single channel. So we did cover quite a bit of material in this notebook, and we hope it's been a good reference for you. There is uh, one other thing that we'd like to discuss, but not from within the notebook. So we're going to move over to a development environment and spend just a few minutes talking about the differences between Matplotlib IM Show and OpenCV IM Show. So we'll continue on there in just a second. Okay, so here we are in the development environment, and uh, we put this script together uh, so that we could demonstrate some of the differences between uh, the Matplotlib version of IM Show and the OpenCV version of IM Show. And uh, we start by just reading in two colored images. This first one here is a colored checkerboard image, and then the second one here is the Coca-Cola logo. And then this very first block of code here is using the matplotlib version of IM Show to display the uh, checkerboard image. And we've seen examples of that before in the notebook. The rest of this code is all centered around using the OpenCV version of IM Show. And there's uh, some extra code here that's required in order to use this properly. So the first thing we do is uh, create a named window here, and then we call the OpenCV version of IM Show, pass in at the named window, and then the image we want to display in the window. And notice right after this, we call the wait key function. And the argument to that function is the number of milliseconds that this window will be displayed. So eight seconds in this case. Uh, if we didn't uh, call this wait key function, then the IM Show function would display the window indefinitely and there'd be no way to actually exit the window. So the wait key function is meant to be used in conjunction with the IM show function. So then uh, we're going to continue on and, and perform the same set of actions except with a different image, uh, the Coke image in this case, just so you can see the dynamic behavior. And then finally down here in this third section, uh, we're going to do the same thing, uh, displaying the checkerboard image again, but uh, this time we're going to pass a zero to the wait key function. So rather than displaying uh, the image for eight seconds, uh, zero uh, means it'll be displayed indefinitely unless any key on the keyboard is struck. So this allows you to have uh, user input rather than waiting for a specific time to pass. And then uh, there's one other option down here that you could use in conjunction with a while loop. You could um, call the IM show function inside of a while loop and then monitor the keyboard to only exit the loop if the user types a specific key, like for example, the lowercase q to quit. So let's take a look at, at how this behaves when we run the uh, demonstration. So here we're displaying the um, image using matplotlib, and I can go ahead and exit that window. And now this checkerboard image is gonna be displayed using the OpenCV version of IM Show, but only for eight seconds. And then the same with the uh, Coca-Cola logo. And notice that I, uh, I'm not able to actually exit the window. I have to wait the eight seconds. And now we're back to the checkerboard image, but in this case, we passed a zero to the wait key function. So this is just gonna be displayed indefinitely until I hit, until I hit a key on the keyboard. So I'll go ahead and hit the space bar and this will disappear. And now we're in the uh, while loop and the Coca-Cola image is being displayed and if I hit uh, the space bar, nothing happens because the wait key function is being monitored uh, for the user to type a lowercase q. So lowercase q is going to be the only key that will allow this to actually exit. So I'll go ahead and hit the lowercase q. And so that's another uh, way for you to use the OpenCV version of IM Show. So we hope that gives you a better feel for some of the subtleties associated with using the OpenCV version of IM Show. And uh, that's all we wanted to cover in this video, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.